Welcome everyone uh, to this uh, webinar toward a common approach to data versioning. It's really um, an information session about uh, progress of the RBA data versioning working group and get your feedback about the initial draft. So that's how we structure the webinar today. Uh, Leslie will give an introduction of the RDA, uh, working, RDA data versioning working group, um, its timeline and why we start the, uh, this working group. Then I will talking about the uh, work come out of this working group that includes version practice and patterns um, and the recommendations. And then uh, Leslie will present the report draft, and uh, that's uh, contribution to other uh, uh, working groups such as W3C and other RDA groups. Uh, then um, finance with uh, a plan for next six months. Um, so uh, now uh, over to Leslie talking about the uh, RDA data versioning group. Okay, so for all of you, there's a few of you probably don't even know what the hell the Research Data Alliance is. It's an international group and I have the link there. It provides a neutral space where members can come together and develop and adopt infrastructure that promotes data sharing, data reuse and data driven research. It currently has just over 8,000 members from 137 countries. So it is quite an interest group and hence when you write something it is going to reach out to quite a few people. I currently have 101 working groups and interest groups and the difference between them is that a working group has targeted outputs in 18 months. From where to go, you have 18 months to produce something. The interest groups just keep going on and on as long as there are people interested in what that topic is. So again, you can see the diversity of groups if you go to the home page. The particular one I work with is the data versioning working group. And one of the things you can do is click on that link and you can all join the page and um, keep getting updates to what's going on. It's led by Jens, myself, Ari Asmi, who is a big leader in that Envery Fair project in Finland, and Bob Downs of Columbia Uni, who has a lot to do with um, the NASA DAX. So the other thing that the RDA does is have plenaries twice a year. And we in Australia were starting to have problems on data versioning. And so Jens and I ran one in September, what we call a BOF. And we got enough interest that at the next one we said, well, okay, can we form an interest group? And we carried that through to the next one in uh, 2017 in Montreal, where it was decided, you know something, we actually can create a white paper on the story of data versioning. And so we formulated and started that group at the Botswana plenary. And we have literally until Helsinki in September to get this final report um, and recommendations up. And if the technical advisory board adopts it, it becomes an output and a reference to um, data versioning to all those members I showed earlier in my um, first slide. So why are we doing this? There has been attempts to do versioning in the past and there was another group in RDA who did it. But that was tended to be more about, um, oh, I've got a database and it's so small, I can actually snapshot it and create a version. But within Australia, and again with ANS, as they then were now the Australian Research Data Commons, we were getting much more complex patterns than that particularly from the big data people in, say, Geoscience Australia with Earth Observation and the Climate Community. 
And so we're now starting to see on the scene people producing these data products that make it easier to access. Certainly in my world in NCI, uh, we were moving data to the compute and we were getting these massive data sets, parallelizing them, we were creating them by creating data from multiple sources and people were adding to them all the time. And then because it was so easy to create a new version of them, um, they were creating versions of them. When we did that, a lot of controversy started to come out. Well, who contributed what to what? You know, who acquired it? Who's the owner? Who's the custodian? And above all, another reason too was provenance. So there's a lot of work going on at provenance at the time. And technically people worked out how to link um, data, but nobody knew how to version it and define exactly what is a version. And so really it's more complicated and I've borrowed this and thank you to the GA um, Earth Observation people who pointed this out to us, that in actual fact, we need to start talking about what I call a data pathway as well as data life cycles. And so we get the raw data, then we calibrate it, and then we go into these data products and analysis ready. And the questions are starting to really come at us as to, well, hang on, what is a new version? When is it a new product? And more importantly, with the world of identifiers expanding, when do we put the darn identifier on it? And so this led to this body of work and Anne's at the time said, yeah, look, let's, let's see what we can do. And so all you wonderful people um, in Australia, you were probably more active, um, contributed a lot of use cases and gave your time to Jerry. And so that's kind of where we want to be here is firstly acknowledge what you did then take you through what we've done with your contributions and how we're starting to work them into this um, white paper and welcoming you one and all to um, see if you agree with what we've done with your use cases. And then more importantly, if you want to, um, join through that web page I gave you on the worker group and um, help us uh, contribute that white paper and make sure your use cases are represented so now I'll hand over to um, Jerry. I think, is next, who is going to um, talk about how she took all our use cases and what she did with them. Yes, thanks, Leslie. Um, so uh, as Leslie mentioned, um, the, a key driver to take a closer look at data versioning came from the work of another RDA working group on data citation, which, as Leslie mentioned, recognised the need for systematic data versioning practices, but the scope of their recommendations was uh, limited um, to, um, to uh, databases where uh, versioning and time stamping um, of queries would allow for the, the retrieval of specific subsets. And what we knew was that there were many use cases that would fall outside of those sorts of parameters. Um, so we set about the task of compiling use cases that really didn't fit with that model. Um, and uh, we ended up collecting six, 16 use cases um, from 14 uh, different organisations. The use cases came from across um, astronomy, the geosciences, biosciences, social sciences, oceanography, climate science. We tried to be as um, inclusive of domains as we could be and represent uh, uh, use cases uh, broadly. We also had cases, uh, well, we also sought to include different type data types. So we have use cases that describe um, remote sensing data, satellite data, sensor data, image data, uh, sequence data and software. Uh, again, trying to be as representative uh, of, as possible across domains. So uh, I won't read out all of these on the screen, but wanted to, I guess, indicate the breadth of um, the use cases that we collected. Um, in some cases, uh, the process started by 
uh, being able to source documentation that was publicly available or made available to us, uh, where some organisations do have um, procedures around uh, versioning of their data. Um, in other cases, um, the use cases were collected by via a discussion um, and we then went through the process of writing up uh, the use case and then asking people to review that and ensure they were accurate. You can see that we have a really strong representation from Australia. It's obviously because uh, we know the community in Australia and we were really uh, delighted at the willingness of, of these organisations to contribute their use cases to us. And um, on the previous screen, you will have seen the link to um, the use case document uh, that we would be delighted if you would go in, have a look at the use cases, make sure that you're still happy with those. And if you have others that you wish to comp contribute, please let us know. Um, in particular, we'd like to thank uh, the people on the listed on the screen now who uh, kindly did provide their time. Um, to uh, provide use cases to us. Um, what we did then was synthesise all of those into a single document that then allowed us to um, work through those to identify uh, patterns and differences between those use cases and then start to formulate a bit of a picture of current approaches to versioning and, um, and where there were similarities and differences between organisations and data types. And uh, Ming will uh, talk us through some of those now. So we analysed the 16 user cases we collected or you contributed and uh, found inconsistencies uh, across these user cases. For example, the inconsistency uh, in what are the magnitude and significance of the change, um, and the inconsistency in naming a version uh, that cross the user cases and even from the same organization, there are different uh, ways of naming it and uh, in consistence in documenting uh, someone uh, some documented the user uh, the changes where some you know just uh, put a new version there without any documentation and uh, also um, the inconsistencies in link uh, link between versions and the link version to um, same data product and also inconsistencies in data citation. So that's kind of, uh, the things we, the, the working group is uh, packing on and uh, working on that and then make recommendations. So um, the recommendation uh, actually uh, build on the analysis of user cases and the two solid uh, uh, existing work. Uh, one is uh, the practice from software uh, versioning and another is um, uh, from library uh, bibliographic record uh, management. So for the software um, versioning practice, the can establish the um, uh, software versioning practice where in software development, uh, apart from the uh, backbone and the versioning control system and uh, platform like uh, GitHub, and etc., uh, most relevant to us here is the semantic versioning. So the software um, development uh, that area use the uh, version number like a ma major dot minor and a patch. But the issue of this has its own meaning. 
for example, Apache is the bug fix usually for uh, developers to track their changes. Uh, the minor version would indicate the functional change that's backward compatible, and the major version would um, not something not work, uh, backward uh, incompatible. So, so this uh, expression of this three field in numbers um, actually have the semantic meanings behind that. Um, another work we build on um, is functional requirement for graph record. This is a um, data model developed by um, developed in library science. Uh, basically, the, there are four entities re related to each other. Uh, work expression, manifestation, and items. How that relates to um, data version it here? So, a work uh, is a distinct intellectual or artistic creation. So, I would think that uh, were related to a data or research project that prompts the uh, collection of data. So next level expression is a specific intellectual or artistic form of a work. Uh, so in, in our area actually is uh, actual data collection and all its uh, versions, they are, can all come uh, expression of a data or research projects. And, uh, Manifestation is a physical embodiment of expression. So um, for each data expression uh, or each version of data, it may exist in different forms. It may be in CSF, in uh, figures, tables, relational database, etc. Each of them is, um, is a manifestation of uh, data data set. And the item uh, at the bottom level, item is a single example of manifestation. So for us, each copy of data set uh, will, be uh, will be accounted as an item. So apart from entities, um, this model also gives relationship between um, entities. Uh, there are three uh, classes of relationship here. One is the derivative relationship uh, that exists between the work and uh, modification based on that work. So uh, in data world, we'll say a version of data set, uh, say one version of data set is derived uh, from its precursors. The next uh, group of relationship, descriptive uh, relationship that uh, exists between the um, entity and then its description, criticism, evaluation, and etc. Uh, so, um, uh, one example uh, is um, all version of uh, or version or revision of data set as a result from uh, this data or research pro project. And also, you know, uh, or a publication uh, uh, is supported by this data set, for example. And the third one is equivalence re relationships that exist um, between exact copies of the same form of work. Uh, so uh, I can say um, uh, we uh, feed the data set to different repositories, so we are able to say to say a data set from a repository A is equivalent to to the one from repository B, for example. So beyond on these two. Um, uh, um, model or software version in practice. So that's uh, the working group. 
uh, would recommend uh, make recommendations on these patterns. The the first the three patterns is about identification. Is identification of each change, identification of form of data, and uh, identification a uh, single object and a collection. And uh, the fourth pattern is about the provenance, um, how to keep a relationship between um, uh, each um, manifestation um, to expression um, uh, uh, between versions and between versions to a data product. And the last one release uh, communicate the significance of the change. I think that's probably also part of the provenance. So provenance, provenance is not not only about relationship and also about actual changes itself. Okay. Yep. Okay. So. That last slide that Ming gave you is kind of at the broad level what we felt the work, the um, use cases you gave us could fit in to. And so the next stage is that um, we need to get it into this group report. And um, so I guess that's what we're again re emphasising make sure you feel that. The work you gave, put into giving us this work is reflected in those use cases and you're happy with where you've ended up um, being slotted into. So we've got the draft report and I can tell you it's a draft report. It's very draft. You'll get double pneumonia if you stand near it, which is meaning that we're only just putting it together in the hope that at Philadelphia in a couple of weeks' time, um, Jens, Ari, Bob and I can walk people, walk people through it. And the key things in that report are what changes constitute a new data version, how are data versions identified, how to plan for new data versions and releases, documenting changes between data versions and what the challenges are for data versioning. And we could write war and peace on that. Um, and in the next slide, you can see that the two key concepts are be clear about which data set is to be identified as a version and communicate the significance of this change to the designated user community of this data set. And if you go to the next slide, I just thought um, I'd show you this figure, which is another one I picked up on Ferber. But you can see how it goes through that equivalent derivative, descriptive, and then down the bottom, those triangles where you're trying to work out whether it's original, it's an equivalent, it's the same work but a derivative work, moving over to the phase where at some stage you will say, this is a new work, it's not backward compatible, it's something I have to identify as something new. So again, you can sort of see, um, and this also is some feedback that um, Simon Cox gave me about the W3C work, partly why they're not going ahead with it in the current revision they're doing is because they got so many versions, so many facets of versioning that they felt more work needed to be done. And so it comes back to your organisation or wherever you're working for having clear policies on how you are going to version your work and be able to communicate what the differences are between your versions. So now I'll hand back to um, Ming, who's going to talk about um, the concepts that I just elaborated on and what topics we want to cover. And again, I go back to you all to say, please help contribute. If you want something more, write to us or go and type it into the report directly. The link's been handed out. Thank you, Ming. Okay. Um, I will present uh, six recommendations in draft to get your feedback. So the first one is uh, version control and the revisions. 
So um, it's different from its precursors. Um, it's a uh, revision. Uh, in any case, each revision should be um, have version controlled, should be recorded. But it, it should uh, each revision have a persistent identity. So, uh, so recommendation here, each change, each revision should be identified. A recommendation from dynamic uh, from data citation working group uh because they deal with uh, dynamic data sets they are uh, recommended to time stamp uh each change so yeah but how that's required to each data repository that's uh will depend on the policy of yours next uh jerry so the second recommendation is identifiers for data set revisions so if a revised data set produce a new entity, uh, what we mean new entity here, if we think about that FRBR uh, model, so when new entity uh, is become new expression of work, that means there are enough in uh, intellectual work put into uh, that change and also um, have significant influence to the uh, research that underpinned it should be um, have a new identifier. And again, is this a new identifier um, um, local to your repository uh, or have you know, persistent identifier or global persistent identifier will depend on the policy of uh, uh, data repositories. But in any case, the revision, the change made to data set should be communicated to user uh, through the relevant cat catalog. And the third recommendation is identify release of data set. So you have revision of data set, but no, you may not release all revisions. But when you reach to the point to release one, uh, release a particular version, or uh, we, we need to formalize the words um, further, uh, but release here, uh, I would think you you publish and make that uh, version available to public. Uh, then um, uh, this release should be uh, should be accompanied by description of what the changes made and recommended to him identify by itself. And then this um, is the fourth recommendation. This uh, is how to deal with uh, data collections and the data object within collection. So the the argument here is the um, collection itself should be versioned and has an uh, identifier, and uh, each item or each data set within collection uh, is self a work if it's a self work then it should be also identified and um, uh, have a revision uh, history so um, both at the item level or at the collection level both should be revision uh, uh, sh should have a revision history and have identify upon themselves. And this is a fifth one, but also about um, identification or identifier. So this is uh, identif identifying manifestation of data set. So um, a data set exists in different form. Uh, if you compare um, there are bits 
you know, this may be different, but the content are the same, but in different form. So whether or not uh, to um, give a PID uh, identifier for each um, for each form or manifestation um, that that would uh, depend on if that uh, you know the use of each form. Um, the last is the problems of data set. Um, as I said in the pattern before, so the so we should record the relationship between each version, between each version and its uh, work, the, uh, the data project or data product. However, the linkage, um, you know, uh, is one kind of pro problems and. Uh, we should also contain the information on the provenance of data set. To me, it's uh, changing, you know, any change and uh, 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 should make that uh, include in, 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 in data record as well. And the last recommendation is for data citation. Uh, data citation has an optional uh, um, uh, elements for include version in, uh, in citation. Uh, the reason is uh, uh, optional because it's not all uh, resource has a version, but if um, the data set uh, you released um, have version, <coughs> you should include that version, <coughs> excuse me, include that version in data citation. <clears throat> data sites recommend to use the semantic uh, versioning as I talked before uh, to as a new identifier for major release. Uh, that, that's, that's recommendation is for data uh, providers to use that semantic versioning, but the DOI itself may not reflect that uh, semantic theory. Uh, and the citation itself may not show the relationship between the versioning, but for data records, uh, the uh, submit to a uh, data site, uh, you probably should have that relationship um, described. Uh, it may not be in citation, but when people follow DOI, get in the landing page, <coughs> They may able to see the relationship to other uh, other versions. So yeah, so that was uh, six of recommendations um, we come up so far. Four of them is about identification, and the one is about provenance. One is about uh, citation. So we would get your feedback. Is this um, cover? Um, you are user cases, or you think there are other recommendations we should uh, um, provide. And apart from um, uh, having these recommendations, the working group, also uh, the data version working group, and also working with other uh, other um, work, working group. Uh, example here is the WSC data that exchange working group. And uh, this working group is working on the DCAT data, uh, uh, data catalog for category. Um, then um, for, for that purpose, for the purpose of developing DCAT, they also have elements on data version. Uh, here is five user cases they have. Uh, uh, one is clear about what the subject, uh, what to version, and then what provides definition of version, and how to, um, what identifier should give to each version, and 
uh, in code release date and uh, version that that uh, um, provence information. So what we did is we look at the user cases, 16 user cases, um, identify uh, six of them here, and they are, are in four categories. Uh, so these user cases uh, either provide a concrete example uh, or requirement for for the existing uh, user cases they already have, and also have new um, uh, new requirements. Uh, for example, um, you know, the, should we have a vocab vocabulary for change types? We see patterns the changes they have. They add, delete, modify. You know, have different uh, categorizations. Should we have? Uh, of vocabulary uh, so that can communicate back to user what changes has made uh, and how we um, um, formalize the naming and labeling the, um, uh, the version. So that's a contribution to the uh, WCC working group. And the, uh, we discussed with, um, with them this user cases. They will take further from here. Okay, so I'll go back. Just um, again, some of you may not be all that familiar with the um, Research Data Alliance, but this is a list of the interest groups or working groups that have approached us because you know our work is relevant to them as well. So as you can see, it hits on provenance patterns, um, software source code, and the other thing too is that data foundations and terminology. And when you're trying to work with an international group, as the previous slide said, we're going to have to start to get clear on the vocabulary. So we still have a lot ahead of us now, but as I said, Earlier, if you are a working group, they only give you 18 months in Research Data Alliance and they're pretty cutthroat about it. So we're heading up to our 12 months time frame in Philly in a couple of weeks time. And this is this draft report that we've talked about that we'll be doing a lot of midnight oil to um, finish. We'll also be having, if anyone wants to listen in, an international meeting with the team at 10 o'clock Australian Eastern um, what are we on daylight time on this Monday? And then before Helsinki, which is P14 in September, plenary 14, we will have to have the final report and recommendations submitted so that at Helsinki we can actually do a proper handover. So on the next slide, um, I'm going this is a slide from the chairs of the working group. That's myself. Ari, Jens and Bob, we'd really like to thank you because the Australian use cases were outstanding. They were, I'd say at least 50% of them came from Australia. And also to those who joined in discussions at the plenary sessions and along the way, we are very, very grateful to ANS, as it then was and now ARDC, to Ming, Jerry and Julia, because we would not be in the state we are. Um, well, use cases came in, they were a wee bit overwhelming and we thought, how the heck do we sort this out? But those three were just wonderful. And then we've also had a fair bit of support from the RDA Secretariat, particularly um, Stephanie and Tobias, for us to keep going and uh, produce something out of this work. So thanks again to everyone. And I'll now hand over to Jerry, because she will um, do the organise the questions. Yeah, thanks, Leslie. Thanks, Ming. Um, so that's the um, the end of our uh, formal presentation. Um, if you have uh, questions or comments, uh, please put them in the question pod, or at least just flag that you have a question, and then we can open up your microphone uh, and uh, you can, you know, speak to the group. Um, to kick us off, um, Julia has indicated that she likes the use of um, FRBR, a good choice for humanities data. 
where FRBR is already familiar. It would be good to see a worked example of how this would work in practice for a, a live data set. Is the group thinking about putting together a few real world examples, mocking up a versioning example of one or two of the use cases? Probably a question for you, um, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, work? is that Julia from the National Library who's yes, contributed that? Yes. Oh, thank goodness for that. So I just wanted to say to you, when we, we've actually spoken to a couple of librarians that we're using further, and they look at us and saying, oh, that was last century. What are you using it for? But yet in our research, it was the only thing that had a conceptual model that expressed what we're doing. And I was hoping you would come on this call for this very reason. And um, yeah, I gather it's starting to get a, a revival in the libraries. And yeah, we'd love to work with you if you want to um, join us or can put us on to someone who can work it through with us. Because it was actually having those different concepts of manifestation of works and that that started to get it through the complexity of what's happening with the um, digital data sets. And I don't know whether Simon Oliver's on the line, but you know, he was a pain in the neck when with the um, Earth observation data because we just looked at it and realised how complex it was, but realised we had to do something because snapshotting was not possible with his work. So if we can get in contact afterwards and follow through with you, uh, we just love it because at the moment we don't know anyone who's using um, Berber. And as I'm a geologist, I feel like I'm using something from the fossil age. Thanks, Leslie. Sorry, go and ahead. And Yen, yeah, Yen, yeah, Yen Scrum, that's a uh, co-chair of this working group. He is a fan of the <laughs> of model, uh, model, and he trying to use this model for many other things. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Nicholas e, um, has asked whether we considered the Portland Common Data Model. I am a geochemist. I have not heard of it. So can you please um, send us details? So I think, Nicholas, you've, you have come across something that um, the group hasn't heard of before, and of course we're open to uh, to any input, so if you could pass that on. Um, you've, you've got uh, Ming's email address, my email address. We'd be very happy to, to receive some further information about that. So any last words from Leslie? Yeah, I'd just like to say again, we're wanting you to contribute because the Australian use cases were the main input to this. Yeah. So absolutely. thank you again. Okay, well, if there's no further questions, we'll close off. This webinar has been recorded and uh, the recording will be made available in the next few days. And uh, anyone who's registered will receive a link to that recording. Uh, please feel free to share that link with your colleagues. Um, and uh, if you want to refer back to it, of course, uh, it's a resource there for you as well as for us. So thank you all uh, for your contributions to both the use cases and for your uh, participation today. Um, we thank you and wish you a good afternoon. Bye for now.